Hey, welcome everyone. Here we are with our Collider's spoilers review of Logan. I'm here joined by... Oh, I'm here. Hi guys, I'm Perry. And I'm so excited to talk about Logan again. Yes, and we also have Schnepp. You weren't on the Knowing Spoilers review, That's but you're right. here on the Spoilers they review. They gotta watch out because I'm like dropping spoilers left and right. So they're like, dude, you can't be on the non-spoilers one just in case you fuck it up. So here I am, spoilers, Snick, Snick, get ready. We're gonna talk about the whole entire movie, spoilers. You okay. better have seen the film. Yeah, yeah, let's start with you, Schnepp, because we haven't heard your opinion at all about the film. What'd you think? What'd you love about it? And I know there's so much you must be wanting to talk about. Definitely. First off, I got to be honest, I was so disappointed with this movie. Just kidding. I can't even really <laughs> joke about it. This movie was so fantastic. I was joking earlier that with was, Perry. That just, was not as good I as, know. as your I was earlier play. I was doing it like just really being a jerk. But no, I mean, this movie's incredible. This is, I think, the best X-Men film made to this date. And I'd, I'd, I'd probably jockey for it being one of the better superhero films ever made it uh it was emotional it had heart it took all of the characters that we've known for the past uh 18 years since the intro of x-men which was in 2000 and obviously these actors have been with it even longer when they got cast in 99 so you know patrick stewart and uh and hugh jackman have been playing these characters not every day but they've been in these movies for almost 18 over 19 almost 19 years they've been playing these characters and uh, that has a lot of a lot of weight to it when you see a character that you watched 18 years ago. And I myself loved the X Men film. I loved even more X Two, X Men United, whatever you want to call it. Some of the other ones, not so much. And then uh, Days of Future Past was kind of a rebirth after First Class, which I really enjoyed. So the X Men movies have had, you know, some ebb and flow. And unfortunately for me, the Wolverine films, the two that came before Logan, were just not really up to par for me myself wolverine origins was you know a lot of studio interference the movie that it wanted to be was not allowed to become what it should have been wolverine also suffers from a great first hour and kind of falls apart into kind of some chaotic cosplay goofiness at the end it just didn't it didn't honor the character and, and you know james mangled such an amazing director that i think by giving him carte blanche to actually do this story right and you jackman knowing that it was so important to actually do the wolverine character right that they were able to take all the elements from the comic books and the previous movie incarnations that you has made become Logan and Wolverine and kind of meld that into this uh, almost like a Western is what I would I would oh, define yeah. it as. It has really nothing to do with old man Logan, the comic book. That's right off the, t the top. Don't look for a spider buggy or any of the characters. It has nothing to do with the that. Hulk, Hulk, hillbilly. Hillbilly Hulks are not involved and neither do they need to be or should be because this film is really about... Uh, it's about family. It's about finding who, find out who you really are and, and learning to stop hating yourself and forgiving yourself. It's so many of these things that are always echoed in uh, some of the greatest Westerns. I would say Unforgiven is okay. one of these, these uh, movies that Clint Eastwood made that this has a lot to carry on with. It carries on the, the idea of the Western. And also to see an R-rated superhero film done with a savagery and exhilarating excitement of these action sequences have never been done before and i think it's the polar opposite of something like deadpool which was also r-rated because it was incredibly humorous and blue and said what it wanted to say it was just really funny logan on the other hand is violent and it is really hardcore violent from the get from the opening scene snicked mm -hmm. is happening and you're yeah. like you're seeing what somebody with three adamantium like super sharp claws the kind of damage that does, not just to the victims, but to himself. I mean, it's really, it's a deep movie, and it's like I got emotionally invested in all of the characters, not just Professor X or Logan, but uh, the young girl who's playing X-23. I mean, I'm forgetting what her- Daphne, Daphne Keen. Daphne Keen. Incredible performance, my God. I mean, when she's like, she's like what Amy likes to call his little murder girl, you know? Yeah. <laughs> my God, is she fantastic. When she's mm -hmm. unleashed and it's several, several sequences of just unrepentant, relentless, amazing violence that is, is deservedly, deservedly violent. It's like when you see Wolverine go full berserker at the end, it is beyond satisfying. I can't mm -hmm. actually remember a scene in a superhero film that had that much, at least for me, like I love the airport sequence in Captain America Civil War because that was a comic book yeah. come to life. And Logan has these sequences in it, which which as an X-Men fan, when you'd read about Logan losing it, mm -hmm. 
Weapon X style. All the times he went berserker, it's like, this is kind of that, but magnified and not done in a superhero way, done in a really grim and action-filled way. So I absolutely love the film. Perry? <sighs> I'm almost overwhelmed with, with how much I love Logan now because one of the things that I was worried about is... You know, when you're lucky enough to see a movie early, and it's a movie that is so highly anticipated, you're just on this high the first time you see it, and, you know, sometimes you see it, you come out all super happy, that was the greatest thing ever, and then when you see it a second time, you start to see, you know, like the finer cracks that you might have missed the first time around, and that's what I was really afraid that was going to happen, because I scored this thing very high in our non-spoiler review, and I was worried I was going to go back in and second-guess how I felt initially. Nope. Nope. Not at all. I was like, this is my neurotic notebook. <laughs> this is, and it's not just two pages. I took like pages and pages of notes just because I, I wanted to make sure that I got to reference almost every single scene and every single little technical detail, every single performance detail that wowed me. This thing is just as good, if not better, the second time around. And I will echo what I said in the non-spoiler review, which I think is one of the best features of this movie, is that this isn't something that an X-Men fan... It's not only for X-Men fans. It's not right. only for people who have seen every single X-Men movie. It is a family story above all else, and that makes it accessible to everyone. I'm so excited that I could... Like, I could even tell my mom to go see this. Yeah. Like, even with the violence. Like, you bring up, actually, that opening scene, which is, you know, him kind of guarding his limo. It is super bloody, and it's super violent, and it's Wolverine using his quintessential powers, his claws. Yet again, it also has so many moments in it where the violence and just what he does with his body adds to his character. And it explains to you, without delivering garbage dialogue, where he's at his, at his life, what is important to him. It's just, I love the parts where he's using himself to block the bullets from hitting the car. I mean, it sounds, <laughs> yeah. really, it sounds really simple and funny, but it just shows you what a dire situation he's in. That like, like That's his livelihood. That's all he has. And you also brought up Daphne Keene and her incredible physical abilities. You know, I don't know how much is actually her and how much is, is a stunt double or whatnot, but... Wherever they're switching it, it's pretty damn seamless, especially in the portions when they're when they're trying to uh, escape their hideaway. Some of the action there, and the action when oh my, one of my favorite beats in any action sequence in this whole movie is the part where you think that they're stopping her, like the bad guys got her and she's screwed, and all of a sudden Logan comes to help her out, and he's already doing his thing. And then she busts out the foot claw. Oh, yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> nope, I don't need you. I got this all on my own. And the second time around, I knew it was coming, and I still got chills when it happened. I mean, I could re I, clearly I could go on and on if we haven't established that with every little story beat and action beat that I love. But, Dennis, yeah. do you want to go first? Sure. Like you guys, I love the movie. We watched our non-spoiler review. I talk about this. Schnepp, you brought up Deadpool, that being R-rated, that having violence. But the violence there is used for comedic effect, mm -hmm. where this one is to show the brutality and a realistic violence, and it's not done just for kind of shock value. It is done with a purpose. This is a rated R movie. I said you could see in the, the previous Wolverine movie that James Mangold did that, yes, there was things that he had to hold back. You could see the studio interference there because it needed to fit into this X-Men universe that they want to keep going on and making this movie. The great thing about this movie is they made it with no sequel in mind, no, like, doesn't have to adhere to any other things that happened. It's its own story. And, and I believe it transcends just the comic book genre. It's, it's a Western, but it's a movie, like you guys mentioned, that you could tell someone who's not into comic book movies or has never watched any X-Men films. I have a friend that asked me, I told him, go see Logan. He's like, well, I haven't really seen any of the other Wolverine movies. I said, it doesn't matter. Right. Hmm. It doesn't matter. You will watch it and you'll love this movie because if you don't know nothing about comic books, you know nothing about X-Men, you know nothing about Wolverine, and you just watch this movie straight out, you think, wow, this is a fantastic sci-fi mm -hmm. western. There, it, which, which has great performance. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Like The performances in this you're talking about Hugh Jackman. You're talking about Patrick Stewart. Um, they're giving the, their all in these performances. They're not holding back. They're not like, oh, this is a comic book movie, or mm -hmm. oh, I'm, I'm collecting a paycheck. Like we've seen 
other actors or actresses do in other comic book franchises when, when they're like, oh, they're kind of over it. This is them realizing that Mangold is, he, I think he co-wrote the script, it's his story, he's directing it, that, that this is something, I think, on a different level. And it is, for me, one of my favorite comic book movies of, of all time. You know, you say, you say, though, about it not setting up a sequel, which is funny to me because I think this, not that they're doing it, no rumors, there, there's nothing confirmed, but by not setting up a sequel and focusing on this story, they wind up setting up a sequel in a more effective way than ever. And I don't mean in terms of like, oh, cliffhanger that's going to make you want to know what comes next. I just mean in terms of getting invested in the characters, building up a really interesting right. backstory and world. I mean... I don't ever want anything to come after this that could possibly ruin how good Logan is, but I sure as hell want to know what happens next. Well, I mean, they do set up a sequel without the intention of, but I mean, Logan himself mentions these new mutants. What are we going to do with yeah. these new mutants? It, new mutants has dropped like three times. Yeah. And it's not the movie that Josh Boone is making. That's a different new mutants. That's the 80s version of the new mutants with Bill Sienkiewicz. But if they decided to do an X-23, it's all set up and ready to go. And since this is spoilers, Professor X and, and Logan, as you know, because you saw the movie, they fucking die. And, <laughs> it, and, it, and, and when they die, it's, heart, it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's because they build up the character with the history that we've seen them in a, fa in a, in a father-son kind of... Professor X brings Wolverine in. Yeah. He finds him. And, he, he, and it's really Wolverine's story. It's what X-Men is based on. It's not that way in the comics, but they decided to make Logan the central character, not only because he was one of the more popular character comic book characters, so they centered it around him, and to a lot of the comic book fans, not Scott Summers or Jean Grey, mm -hmm. they, the original X-Men took a little bit of a, a backseat to the most popular character, Wolverine, rightfully so, because that character has so much depth to him, and you see all of that plus more with Logan. Actually, it was Hugh Jackman's original idea. He had a dream, and he woke up and wrote this story down. Mm. And he called J James Mangold and said, I know I know the story for Logan. It was basically, <sighs> he had this kind of unforgiven dream, an idea. He didn't credit himself with the story, but it's Hugh Jackman's original idea that then James Mangold fleshed out, and then they brought in those writers. So I think it's a great way for them, both of them, to send off the character. Mm -hmm. It's such a strong way to send off the character. I mean, it's emotional. Like you said, you could tell anybody to see this movie and it'd be like, just it's like a science fiction Western. Yeah. And if they're not teary eyed by the end of it, there's something wrong. They're from <laughs> Westworld. They're not human. Yeah. I mean, it I literally I flat out draws cried when yeah. both of them died. And it's, it isn't even just because we've watched them in every single movie. And then you, you and I think Dennis too have an, a, an extensive history reading, reading about their stories and comics too. It's also because of like what happens in this movie that we watch now. It's about seeing, Logan's uh, Logan's relationship with Charles go through the movie, and like they uh, they obviously have the long-standing relationship from the previous films. But then part of the reason I cried when when uh, Wolverine dies at the end isn't just because I know Wolverine from the other films; it is because I see how that affects Laura. Like that's part of the reason yeah. that I cried so much because she was crushed and their journey as as a, a father and daughter kind of situation there. But one other like I have a sweaty detail for you. Sweat it but, up. So. There's a part in the movie where he pulls the file folders out of her backpack. Right. And the second time around, I was determined to catch the name on the file prior to his own. And it was Christopher Bradley. <sighs> Bolt. Yeah, I, I remember reading I don't somewhere know. online that somebody I was, was like, I was, yeah. like, determined to catch a, a really cool detail. But, okay. you know, I don't really know much about that character or, or which kid his ability would correspond to, but... That's extra sweaty. Yeah. You, you know, I, I can't remember who Bolt is. I tried. Is. Yeah, I no, tried a little good. bit. I know Bolt is a character. <laughs> I can't remember if it's a Grant Morrison character run, or it's like, it's not the original X-Men, but it's mm -hmm. one of the later X-Men. So. Yeah, and, the, and for me, too, it's like, the perf the performances that they had in it, not only is Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, uh, what's his name? Stephen Merchant as mm -hmm. Caliban. Oh, yeah. When I first heard he was He's cast... So I was like, oh, I don't know. He's, I mean, I love Stephen Merchant. He's a hilarious guy. I just didn't know if he was going to work in this. It was going to be too funny. But his chemistry with Hugh Jackman worked as well. There's a lot of comedic uh, tones to that. Also, um, Boyd Holbrook as, as uh, Donald Pierce as a villain. He had a charisma, some mm -hmm. swagger to him, and, and him coming out like even like you could see that he feared 
uh, fighting uh, X-23 in, in those sequences. And, and um, I don't know, what are some of your guys' favorite scenes from, from I just I had oh, to look it up. My. He was actually in Wolverine Origins, played, oh, by, really? Do, uh, b- played by Dominic Monaghan. Huh? Oh, my God. Yeah. As Bolt, yeah. That's as, funny. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, he's from the New Mutants. Huh. Um, I'm sorry, what was your I question? totally what, forgot about that. What was that? your some of your favorite sequences in this film? Oh, my God. There's so many amazing yeah. sequences. I'll tell you one of the, the shocks that now that you've seen the movie and you saw those trailers completely took me by surprise. Evil Wolverine. Huh. Mm. Duplicate Logan. Cloned yeah. Logan. Badass, younger-looking, savage Logan. Scary Logan. That was horrific. Him murdering Professor X. The look in, his, in Charles' face. Like, the betrayal. The just... And also, I mean, let me say the sequence where Xavier goes crazy and the whole world yeah. is oh, yeah, shaking. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. And Wolverine is trying to fight his way and just mm. just literally killing all of these guys who are frozen. He's just stabbing them in the head oh. relentlessly to get to Charles Xavier to give him the drug to make him stop causing this mutant havoc. It, they also insinuate that Xavier might have killed all of the rest of the X-Men. Yeah. That's insinuated yes. in this movie where it's like, why... Charles has become, you know, a locked away person where Caliban is like making sure nobody else is coming near him is because he did something really bad. Yeah, I and think they, it probably, he probably, they alluded to that he may have had one of these seizures while at the X Mansion and therefore killing the X and maybe Wolverine wasn't around or maybe Wolverine because of his healing ability was able to, you know, survive that. And mm-hmm. which is kind of like a little nod to the comic book because in the comic book, it was Wolverine that had accidentally killed all the x-men and this maybe it's professor x that's what they're we're and and you mentioned before definitely old man logan the the storyline to this is nothing like the one in the comic but i would say the tone of it and the feel of it still is very similar it's kind of almost like a spiritual version of, of that film let me say quickly my favorite scenes i mean the whole movie is so great that it's hard to break it into favorite scenes I got to say that last action sequence mm-hmm. where Wol- Wolverine, where Logan takes that the extra juice and yeah. shoots all of steroids it Steroids is steroids. Because you know what's happening. It's just going to be this sequence yeah. of madness, and they truly deliver on it. But I'd have to say with, with X-23 coming in and them both fighting side by side, uh, and you get to see some of the bad guys really bite it in a great way because they're all jerks. You're like, all of the bad <laughs> guys get it and they got it coming. It's one of those westerns where you've had it coming. When Clint Eastwood blows Gene Hackman's head off, he had it coming. So um, though all those action sequences are incredibly well done, but I got to say some of my favorite sequences are just the scenes with Logan and Charles. Some, yeah. Just mm-hmm. them hanging out and talking. It's because they have a history, because they could joke and rib each other a little way, but you could tell they care about each other. And Charles trying to get Logan to care again about Laura. Mm. It's like literally, not only is it his daughter in, like, from genetic yeah. cloning, but it's you've got to care again because the, these are the new mutants. These are the you you know you might have you know locked away all your feelings. And in the movie, in the beginning, it's kill or be killed. Yeah. Like he's taking people out, but he's like, look, I'm gonna give you a chance. But yet he'll murder people because it's like it's either him or me. And that's literally the world that he's living in right now and how much he kind of hates himself so much that he's letting his insides die. Mm-hmm. It's it's a lot of emotional mm-hmm. stuff that are going that's going on with Logan. So it's great to see that that turnaround that happens where he finally starts to care again, you know? It's yeah. nuts how they can make you care about all those kids too when none of them really get any screen time. Right. It's just the way that that part of the story is built up throughout and then when you actually get to meet them and spend time with them in the third act. I mean, how much face time do those kids really get? Yet when they're walking away from his grave, I'm like, I kind of want to follow you guys. Right. You're a fun little bunch that could just kill people that that sounds like a good movie to me with scenes though that the one of the scenes that you pointed out towards the end when he goes he goes crazy on everybody that's one of my favorite shots shots because it's the the one take where he's running through the woods just killing everybody and it's you know there's definitely cuts in there and it's meant to be one shot like damn is that well done and effective another favorite is the part where Boyd Holbrook and his crew come in and they try to catch them at their their hideaway because that is there's just so many stages to right. that one big action set piece and they're all again just very well done down to 
down to Laura killing and stabbing people, and same with Logan as well. And then you have a car chase in that too. I thought that was just incredible. Oh my God, there's so many things I'm forgetting now. I like all the interaction between Laura and Logan too, especially the part where, where they're in the car together and she reveals that she can speak. Totally. And she just goes on and on. But the interactions between the two of them, I really did like everything I saw with uh, Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman, but I see like that same chemistry with him and her. And you know, when they've had so long to work that out together and you just see like this young girl, this young brand new actress who's in this major motion picture, just step in and go toe to toe with Hugh Jackman. Cause it, you know, it's one, one note that I had written down was the second time I had seen it because, you know, by the end of the first movie, I saw her journey and I knew what a formidable force she was. Yeah. When I started watching it the second time, I forgot how small and like childlike she looked you know the yeah. first the first time we one of the first times we see her well she's in the back of the car driving away in the cemetery and she's playing with the ball and just she looks so teeny and like, slight and right, frail do the right thing like she's like 10 she's yeah. got to be 10 or 11 but then through her abilities and through you know the character starting to build and starting to grow and growing attached to the people around her all of a sudden i'm looking at her at the end like she could be standing there right next to all the x-men i saw in the very first x-men film and mm. be perfectly fine Right. Yeah, for me, my favorite sequence is, you mentioned the schnep, between uh, Hugh Jackman, uh, uh, Wolverine, and Logan, and Professor X, specifically when they go to that family. They, they go have mm -hmm. dinner, and they have this moment where, for one you know, brief hour, this is a normal life for, it, for them, and, and they're joking around, even though they're not... They're not totally telling the family who they are, but they are relating, you know, the, their real relationships and in some of the, their stories and whatnot. And later, when when Logan brings Professor Ux upstairs, and then he he talks about how how normal this is, and this is what you know we should all be looking for. And then, kind of, then going into that, I don't deserve this stuff. I, that 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 part broke my heart. I could not believe how brutally they killed that whole family. Yeah. I did not think this, it has the R rating, it proved it can get violent and dark. I didn't think it would go there, especially with the sun, but they did it, they did it well. Yeah. And it, you know, with uh, with Eric LaSalle's role as the, the father figure, it was a very interesting, nice isn't the right word, I mean nice in terms of a, a story beat, but it was a very effective place to end it where what what he was about to do made sense. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's it was a, a very brutal, and it made you really hate those bad guys even more mm -hmm. because that family didn't deserve that. Yeah, and it wasn't this thing where oh, Logan comes in and saves the day. No, no. they all get what even the kid. Yeah, like it's not like oh, then he got away. There's <sighs> some sort of happy story, and then it breaks your heart even more because they all they did was invite them home, open their home, o open their home, have them come over, and this is like. You know, one of those things where, well, kind of Patrick, uh, Professor X's fault because he's the one who accepted this invitation, even though Logan wanted to, to go on. Let's not be part of this. Right. He accepts the invitation. They go there, stay the night, and that's what happens. That's the consequences right. of being around Logan. Yeah, and it just goes to show what kind of like messed up stuff they have to live their lives knowing they did. That was, and that's like a baby version of what uh, Professor X was apparently responsible for. Yeah. Like they they lost three lives there. Right. Who knows how extensive the destruction was for whatever he had done before? I can't help but feel like in the movie that Xavier is willing to risk everything to have that one night of normalcy, mm -hmm. not just for himself, but for Laura for and Logan. for Logan, that to give them that break that they need, you know, to sleep in a, in, a, in a family environment, to feel that love at the dinner table, that's what I felt, you mm -hmm. know, I felt like it's worth it. And unfortunately, Charles pays for it, you know? I wanted to touch on the villains before sure. before we move on to, because that, that was my one I'm going to I'm going to keep calling it a con that's not really a con with this movie is on first watch I felt like I needed just another layer to Boyd Holbrook's character. I understood his agenda. I knew what he was about and in black and white it makes sense. However, if I had gotten more of him and what he was about, I'm afraid it would have taken away from 
Logan, Laura, and Professor mm -hmm. X. And that's kind of why it's a con that's not really a con because you only get X amount of minutes in any movie yeah. and sometimes you need to forego something to have something else. On the second watch though, I will say that they do plant the seeds pretty effectively to a point where there was a little more, I got a little more out of it. I still would not backtrack and, and change my statement. It still feels true to me to describe um, Pierce and uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Rice, Rice. Rice and Dr. Rice, Rice that way. I, I would still describe them the exact same way just in terms of how much I saw of them in the movie and just like the need to get a little more, I guess. But at the same time, I think they paved the way well enough where they serve the heroes the way that they mm -hmm. were meant to. Whereas if I had gotten what I wanted, which is with Boyd Holbrook's character in particular, there's one line towards the beginning of the movie where he says to Wolverine, he's like, I don't care about you. And, and it was because Laura was his responsibility. Right. So he needs to take <clears throat> care of his responsibility. And that right there kind of writes a potential wrong with a villain character. That's why he works it well enough for me. But at the same time, a little piece of me wanted wanted to know why he he was comfortable with doing things like that to begin with. I'll, I feel the opposite of you. I feel it was just enough. I, I don't. I didn't want a villain. I'm not saying you would did, but mm. a twirling mustache, no, explain no, yeah. no villain. I liked that they were in the background. They were the subtext, and they were the reason that forced Logan and Charles mm -hmm. to move on from their hideaway, from their safety zone, and and risk their lives to save this girl. And that if you didn't have a bounty hunter who's like, I don't care about you, I'm not after you, get out of my way, I'm after this person, yeah. get out of my way, like Wolverine, like Logan has been doing, running away for all these years and hiding Charles mm -hmm. Xavier and hiding, taking responsibility, I think that's what the key to me, at least the storyline to me was, the villains are unnecessary, they're like, I wouldn't say they're a MacGuffin, but they were the no, device. No. They were the, the device to push them forward yeah. into becoming emotionally mature adults and taking responsibility for all of their own separate lives, even Laura having to become an emotionally mature young adult. I think your mindset with what I'm expressing is totally accurate. And I feel like this is why some movies, an idea might seem great. And then when you execute it, it doesn't work out as mm -hmm. well because it, it is such a fine line between too much and too little. And I think it's just instinct to say, I need a reason for that. Mm -hmm. But do you really need a reason for that? Yeah. Right, and I was okay without having yeah, anymore, but yeah. I see what you're saying too. Yeah. And then also she's going to have to deal with the fact that ultimately these three characters sacrificed their lives so that she could live hers, mm -hmm. which is you had Caliban who, you know, who died. You had Professor X, you had Wolverine, and all three of them sacrificed themselves so that she could go off with the rest of uh, the, the, I guess, uh, new mutants right. and, and try and live a normal life and not be hounded. And so I think that's something that her character is going to have to deal with. Totally. Um, also... I actually liked that there was no end credit scene, post credit yeah. sequence, because this movie is not a movie that needs one. Well, the there is one now. You heard, you read that they added one. No, no, yeah, no, no. Uh, that was wrong. Was that it was, wrong? Yeah, yeah. It was reported that there was, and then they had to backtrack that. Good, there was, because I'm, it doesn't. I'm very need glad one. it does not need one. I was, I was bummed one. when I heard they added one. It would have so felt glad it's not dis real. distasteful. Yeah, they, well, they end it in such a respectful way to wrap up these characters and, you don't and need a tagline you no. don't need like a secret glove you don't need no. some hand coming out of a vortex it's um, it's a movie this might uh, this actually ends like a movie and it might sound like too melodramatic and too like making it about me kind of thing but th there is a a mourning process totally. that goes on after this movie and after you lose a character that you've seen for x amount of films and x amount of years and it, it just would have felt wrong. I mean, honestly, it's so good. I don't want to see Hugh Jackman come back. And I don't either. Role. Or Professor X. No, I this think. is the perfect yeah. way to end it yeah. for their story. And how many times does an actor get a chance to end their story in such a beautiful and real ending way? Mm -hmm. Both of those actors, if, you know, I was joking, like, never say never. But honestly, you know, I think 
Patrick Stewart basically was like, after he saw the movie again, was like, you know what? I'm going to announce I'm not playing this character anymore because there's no better ending. There I mean, is they, no better ending for both characters. That's it for both characters. And it, I feel it's just. And like, they're going to use. I mean, look, McAvoy is Professor X. You're going to see him again yeah, in X Force yeah. or whatever, millions of other X Men movies. And then in about five or 10 years, they're going to reboot everything and there will be a brand new Wolverine. Yeah, eventually, which is totally fine. Which is fine. fine that's how but, it should be. But I want Hugh Jackman and and Patrick Stewart to have this be their last final note on these characters. And, and can can I just say thanks for taking your time and making a good Wolverine movie because so many of us wanted to see something like this. I mean, not even, I, I won't say like this Unforgiven Western type film, but just a really good movie with these characters in it. And I think that everyone involved cared enough to take the time to tell the story the right way and do it the right way, take budget cuts, make it rated R, do everything that they possibly can. You got to give props to Fox for trusting in them and like yeah. getting their, you know, we got to rub ourselves all over the movie and make <laughs> our, you know, little statements. Just let them do what the fuck they're trying to do. And that's why we get such an incredible, amazing adult movie. This is not for children. No. And guess what? Like we saw it at a screening. And so like, I'm all teary eyed at the end. I have to walk out. All my friends are like, what'd you think? And like everyone's all pumped up. And they also were like, you know, it was actually a somber type of what do you think? It wasn't that pumped up, but everyone's like emotional after the movie was over. All of us were like, yeah, it was really good, you know, but it's like, it's a weird thing. So, you know, definitely see the movie. When you see it this weekend, you're going to see it with like thousands of people and you're all going to cry together. Hmm. Were there any negatives for you, Schnapp? Boy, I, mean, I well, well, we'll get to the rating a little bit later, but I, uh, you know, not really. Not I mean, really. I mean, uh, I, I, let only... me think about it. There was one, but and now I've already forgotten okay. about it. Go, I mean, go the ahead. only thing I had pointed out in our non spoilers review, I thought there was a few parts where the CG or the green screening could have used some work, but that wasn't like, didn't like super detract from the movie itself. So, you know, and then, you know, with you, Perry, I agree, like the villains didn't really have the biggest motivation, but at the same time, they didn't really need to for, mm -hmm. for this story. It's such for, a difficult thing yes. to explain because it's one of those things where it's not like right or wrong on paper. It's just a feeling right. that I have. Here's my little, my one one notch off of my why I gave it. I gave it a super high rating, but mm -hmm. I felt there was a moment once they reached the uh, the, the uh, little kids escape camp. Yeah that everything kind of slowed down. There were like moments of quiet, which were actually earned and great, yeah. but there was a moment where it just felt like it floated mm -hmm. in a certain way for me, where I was like, all right, well, what's next? And I just, that was my, I mean, that's such a, a minor gripe. It was literally, I really don't have that many negatives to, at all. There's almost none. So I'm like, now I'm kind of nitpicking, so I'll mm -hmm. just stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perry, do you have any uh, other favorite scenes or sequences? I, I don't think I've been this stressed this yeah. stressed about a, a spoiler review in a long time just because I love this thing so much. And I know the second the cameras stop rolling, I'm going to think of a bajillion things, especially when I took all these notes mm. and now I can barely read any of them. <laughs> but it's it really is just fun sitting through this multiple times because there's so many things that, that are said regarding, you know, the the grand scale view of mutants and what, what time we're at, just like in terms of the Year and how people view mutants as a whole. There's just a lot of interesting layers that you wouldn't expect in such a personal story. And really, this is this movie is so exceptional that I almost wish that it came out a little later in the year so that this could be an awards contender. I feel like, should, and I should, I feel like yeah. it should I'm, be. It, I don't yeah. know if and I can... And that's not just because we're comic book nerds, but this is such a good film. I almost like, think the comic book thing, it hurts it in terms of getting nominated for right. Best Picture oh my because, God, because absolutely. that's what people are going to associate it with. But if it, this was just called Philip and it was like a yeah. science fiction film, exactly. you'd be like, I, you got to see Philip. It's right. an Oscar nominated. It's going to yeah. get nominated. Yeah. I really do think that if this had come out closer to Oscar season when all the traditional Oscar movies arrive in yeah. theaters, we could potentially be having a very similar conversation like we had with Deadpool this year with with screenplay awards. And, and this is in addition to, you know, VFX type things that superhero movies are traditionally up for and costumes, the, the makeup in this. Mm -hmm. God, if this movie is not nominated for. Yeah, I mean, he just looked incredible yeah. and how and how they switch him back and forth. Wow, that is something else. But please let this movie be firmly in the conversation come the end of 2017 because it really deserves to be there was one thing i just remember that we we didn't talk about and it's something that we had at least i myself and i know campy felt this way when we saw it in the trailer we thought it was stupid we disliked it thought it was out of place it actually works in the in the movie 
and that's the, the existence of the comic book. Mm -hmm. So in the trailer, right. it just looks like this throwaway, stupid, wink, wink, wink at the audience. But actually, in the context of the plot of the movie, it actually really works because it, it's it. They use that as this kind of oh, Logan looks at it like oh, those are just fantasy stories. You guys are talking about us, but those are all fantasy. This this place doesn't exist. This you, you're living in a fantasy land, and I loved how that was worked into it as opposed to being a nod to this is a comic. Mm -hmm. Right. How do you guys feel about that? I thought that worked. It, that was worked in beautifully, and it's it's kind of what I was getting at before. It's it's like you have the comic book culture that exists within this movie. You have people that are affected by his seizures. You have folks that work in that facility and are growing new mutants. You have people who want to control mutants. There's just so many things going on that makes just e that makes everything so much more interesting and layered and not cut and dry right it's it's a it's a piece that makes me want to see want to see the greater world and know a little bit more about what's going on elsewhere but in a way that never detracts from the focus of the story which is a, a pretty incredible thing to achieve can i just say also i love the way dr rice was killed because it's like <laughs> it was what we were talking about it a little later it's like, here i've arrived and now i shall explain my plan half of his head has exploded <laughs> literally it's like no d dude you're done it's like the way that the bad guys were taken out was uh was really well done and, and executed really you know spot on so i can't really i can't nitpick really okay you know? well just what one other cool de now i'm reading my notes and i'm panicking about not mentioning things but one one thing that i feel like this is a this could classify as a sweaty detail mm -hmm. that i enjoyed is when they were talking about laura's foot claws how they pointed out how that could be that could have come from her being a female version of wolverine just because of the the animal breeds mm -hmm. that like a, i think they reference a lion or a tiger how how the mother uses the back claws or something there's just little touches of right. that that you might not catch the first time around that when you really listen it is almost shocking how they find reasonings for certain things, and it makes all this stuff so much more interesting than just person inherits inherits or is born right. with superpowers and has to save the day. And she's 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 got the uh, the you know Wolverine's DNA coursing through mm -hmm. her from that very first scene where she's holding the head, and they're like, no, <laughs> no, and she's like, snick, you're like, no, and you're like, it's such a good buildup that you see in the trailer, and wow, what a great, great, amazing action scene. The sound design yeah. in this, too. When we're talking about awards, please let's come back to this for sound sound editing and sound mixing. Yeah, All right, sure. Snap, why don't you give your overall thoughts in a, in a grade or a score out of uh, 10? I can only highly recommend Logan as much as possible. Uh, see it Friday, opening night. If you can see it Thursday night, definitely see it. I give it a 9.9 .9 out of 10. Now, you know, some people can uh, go back and see some of my other reviews for Superman films. You gave that a nine, and then I think it's a seven or a five or this or that. Hey, whatever. This is almost flawless. I mean, I really, like I said, there's a few little things that didn't, took it away from being a total 10 for me. I don't, it's just an incredible film. I love Westerns. This is a truly a new Western. It's a science fiction Western. I don't even know if I would call it a superhero film. It has it's, super. Yeah. it has characters who were in the comic books but it's really an emotional story about family and the divisiveness of people having special unique powers or you know what it is to uh, be, be uh, embrace who you are I, it's it's a, it's all these all these storylines kind of course through the entire film and also they've been part of this entire the uh, you know the characters of Logan and Professor X through the entire storyline and then we come upon them in this future world where they're both not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They've both rejected all of their thoughts of what, who they are, and they're hiding from themselves. So it's kind of, it's a good way to see themselves, all of the characters stop hiding. I give Fair. it a 9.9. I'm sticking with my nine out of 10. And, and to be completely honest, when I grade things, I, I just have a very difficult time looking at a movie and calling it perfect. But this is, this is probably at the end of the year, going to be a score that is as close to perfect as I imagine any movie that comes out this year is going to get. I, I will be surprised if it falls off my top 10. I've said it before. This, I, I really, I still can't believe how good Logan is. It's like I walked out emotionally exhausted and also just shocked. I mean, I really can't believe that we got all that and then ended up with this. And I'm not saying I hated every Wolverine movie, you know, even even 
the ones that aren't particularly well done. I still put them on and I am entertained to a degree. This is another level of filmmaking though. This movie is not just meant for en sheer entertainment or the excitement of seeing a superhero movie. This is so much more. And I'm so thankful that we had these characters and their runs this way. Yeah. I gave this movie a 9.4. Love this film. It, it's like we mentioned before, I, I believe it, it transcends just the comic book genre. I think it is people who are into sci-fi movies, people who are into westerns, people who just uh, drama, even just family drama. It's a drama first. I think that's the most important thing that James Mangold focused on. He said, let's make a story that's about characters and, and talk about the story and have character development and chemistry and development and not worry about any of the, the comic book things, not worrying about setting up, okay, well, let's introduce this character because we've got to sell this toy. We're gonna, right. It's a very minimalistic sto story. I mean, I know it still costs a lot of money. It has a lot of big actors in it. And I, I think the story of Logan, basically, Logan sacrifices his 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 life for X twenty three to give her to give her not not even the life but the chance or the potential to have what he did not have. Right. I mean, he maybe had it for short spurts of time, probably sometimes when he was with the X Men, you know, little spurts throughout his life. But towards the end, he was a broken down man who really was kind of only there to take care of Professor X. Yeah. I mean, for himself, he was just. You know, he was drinking. He was he was just a shambles. And then she gave him some purpose. And then it's just the perfect way for me, for Hugh Jackman to end this role. Perfect way for Patrick Stewart to, to end this role. I highly recommend this film. So you guys, let us know what you think about this film. Now that you've seen it, post your comments below. Tell us how many times have you seen it? What your score would have been? What are your favorite sequences? And and if you, maybe you didn't like it as much as we did, tell us tell us why in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtubecom slash videos. I'd like to thank uh, Schnepp over there. Where can they find you? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp, and also on Collider Heroes every uh, Tuesday. At uh, we're going to be doing it live, but. 2.30 right now, then a couple weeks after our 100th episode, tune in. That's going to be a very special episode. We're going to get really sweaty there. Let's check it out. <laughs> Perry? I am at P. Nemeroff on Twitter and Instagram, and you can watch Collider behind the scenes every Saturday. And you guys can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero, Instagram, Dennis.TZNG, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.